Alright, before anyone goes crazy, I'm not referring to overpowered champions, even if some of them may have been at some point or still are. And I'm also not ignoring the fact that the godliness of some of these champions might have diminished since then. These champions were either revolutionary for the jungle and created a new archetype, or pushed the envelope so hard they reshaped the requirements of the jungle. This list is for those champions who epitomize jungle perfection. Some of them were nerfed to the ground, some of them are still perfect but simply prone to being forced out of the game by Riot. This list ignores any junglers who only became strong due to being grossly imbalanced like Rili Sin Zhao, or are only godly during fringe cases like Satan Master Yi. First one up is Vi. She came out with a whimper as most people were figuring her out, and I blame this largely on the fact that they were led to believe she was supposed to be a top laner. I knew she was going to be crazy from the jungle because her ultimate was basically a guaranteed choke slam on someone. I spam so many games and made so many videos of her when she came out. She was a dream for junglers. She wasn't the first jungler who could perform combos, of course, but her combos are a deadly combination of control and death. Up until that point, a lot of junglers were very brute force oriented, or just tanks, and although there were a small number of junglers who didn't follow that trope, she was the first one that had an ability that guaranteed you the target was going to be grabbed. As to why she's a god, her entire kit was usable and pushed towards her end goal, which was to kill people. Not one ability of hers is a dead skill. No ludicrously bad builds have to be pushed on her for her to achieve what she wants to do, and she is by no means tied to any one build or even summoner spells. So to sum it up, she's a straight out murder champion that had everything about her supporting this notion. She can beat down anyone if given the chance, and the only thing her target can do is just accept it. Or by using Zanyas, or be eaten by time. You get what I mean. Next up is Kha'Zix, the disciple of Darwin. Kha'Zix was and still is another jungler's dream come true. Riot's been systematically nerfing whatever of his becomes strong, so I have no idea what they truly intended with him, but he's a champion who can adapt to anything. Combat-oriented junglers at the time had the problem of being way too linear and not malleable, which meant they had one build and were strict with it or had one way of playing them, period. Kha'Zix changed things up tremendously by outright altering his playstyle at will with his ultimate. Kha'Zix could evolve his claws for massive assassination powers, his spikes for AoE clearing and massive poke, which was heavily nerfed since then, his legs for a huge gap closer that can be set upon kills, or evolve his ultimate for dozens of things that have changed over time. Point is that Kha'Zix was the killer he needed to be for that specific game. Having that much freedom on a fighter is beautiful as you can alter your build depending on what you needed, and perhaps, especially in the case of evolving his spikes, salvage a struggling game. He pushed for an aggressive meta and steamrolled it. It was amazing for a fighter to have so much versatility, and it is still technically is a lot of versatility, as not many fighters even have options like Kha'Zix does. Think of it this way, if you need poke and siege, you evolve your W. If you need to burst someone down fast, you of your Q and hopefully you isolate them. If you need to catch slippery champions or go in and get out without getting killed, you evolve your jumping to get a better gap closer and an escape. You can evolve your offensive capabilities depending on what you deem is important in that game. To sum it up, he's simply the perfect fighter jungler. Unfortunately, not all meta support him, but those that do bear the full evolutionary brunt of Kha'Zix's adaptability. You can't stop his progress. Without a question, Elise is a goddess of the jungle. She's never been truly weak in the jungle, it was only until Riot decided to break all 8 of her legs and just keep her out that she became unusable. She was Riot's attempt at making an AP jungler that wasn't a tank, so to make this work out they made this amalgamation of on hit and percentage damage, in a way so she couldn't somehow become abusable in lane like Diana did. She's a toolbox of sorts in that she has a bit of everything you'd want in a jungler. She has mobility, sustain, percentage damage that works without too much investment, an immunity spell that doubles as a conditional gap closer, a long range skill shot stun, and the safety of being a ranged champion sometimes. Elise simply oozes value and safety. There is a very systematic approach to playing her. It is coincidentally like a spider's way of catching prey. It's playing very patiently with Elise and utterly punishing her targets when they slip up and fall into her designs. Unlike many other junglers, even if she got her ass kicked, her kit allows her to contribute and still access plenty of value from her abilities, including being able to assassinate low health people. Still, Elise is basically cheating since Riot set out to make the perfect jungler and succeeded. They did everything everything in their power to remove her from the lane to prevent what happened to Diana happening again as I already said that, and it worked out perfectly. I don't think I even have to say anything about this champion. Lee Sin has been the epitome of god jungler since the week after his release. I say that because he came out like crap and then he's been buffed and then he's been really godly since then. 
People still ignored him because they ignored any champion that wasn't OP out of the gate, but he began to quickly catch on with all the crazy stunts he could pull. Super high damage, insane pathing options, super high sustain, mobility that was unheard of at the time. The champion had it all and still does even after several nerfs. Okay Lee Sin players are a dime a dozen, but the godly Lee Sin players basically take full control of the game and roll with it. Words cannot describe how artistic it is to watch good Lee Sin pull off fancy stunts, and even better when those stunts are actually truly effective and win the game. All the other gods already mentioned are strong too and pull off clutch plays, but Lee Sin is probably the only jungler who can pull off miracles. Right off the bat, I'm going to tell you it's not Jarvan. Just so you guys don't think I'm calling my favorite champion the most godly jungler. Is this champion still a god jungler? No. Is this champion still even a plausible jungler? Not really. Will people be confused and then call me biased? Probably. If you've played more than one or two seasons, you know what I'm going to say or which champion I'm going to bring up is true. The historically most godly jungler of all time title goes to Nasus. Again, like I said, he used to be a god, but this is a list for champions who at least once embodied jungling perfection. When jungle Nasus was a thing, Riot had given him increased range on his abilities when he activated his ultimate, along with having more range in general. When anyone thinks of Nasus, they immediately think of his Q and nothing else, but his other abilities are chock full of value. His wither outright cripples an opponent and it has a cooldown low enough that it can basically be permacasted on a foe. His spirit fire lowers the armor of those inside it, which makes him more vulnerable to Nasus and his teammates. His ultimate makes him a behemoth that gains tons of health, an AoE dot around him, and progressively makes him stronger. Again, every single thing about him oozes with value. It didn't even matter how much he could get kited, it didn't matter if he couldn't stack his Qs, simply throwing his abilities in the right spots would win games. Even so, if he managed to farm up his Q stacks, he would become a force to be reckoned with within his own rights. To add to this, while he could be kited, it wasn't as easy as it is now considering he had way more range back then on his abilities. Nasus was a support jungler that could transition into a bruiser that maintained all his utility. Just one of his utility abilities could turn a fight on their heads and he had two abilities that did just that. Needless to say, Riot knew they couldn't let Nasus continue this way so they giga nerfed him and made him far less attractive in the jungle. He could still technically jungle but the usability of his abilities was greatly stifled and his value is far more difficult to access. What makes him more godly than the other god junglers you say? Well they make fancy plays and are whimsy and shit. Nasus simply pointed at someone and whispered, you lose, and they were removed from the game by Wither. Fanciness is awesome, but the ball-busting simplicity of Nasus was beautiful in its own regards. He assisted your team heavily, crippled his enemies, and would occasionally straight out carry the entire team. Perhaps Riot will one day unleash the Hound again. Tell me what you thought of the video in the comments below, whether you agree or disagree and think someone else should have been considered a god juggler. This channel is supported by my sponsors, Crunchyroll, Pro Build Systems, and Loot Crate. Check out the description below for links to the websites. Signing up for any trials, including Crunchyroll's free anime trial, greatly supports my channel. Also remember to give the video a like to support the channel and subscribe if you haven't yet.